What a long way we've come. I think five years ago, I don't think anyone would have suspected or envisioned that such a, a park and such a display of significant world-class art would be possible. From the reminders of Des Moines past. If you remember on Locust, you had all those individual little shops. And so, no, it was not attractive. It was really not what you wanted people to see as they were coming into the downtown area. To the promise of Des Moines' future. Starting with a provision plan, this community started to see what it could be. With the collaboration of the city, private and corporate donors, as well as generous demonstrations of philanthropy, that vision has taken shape. John and Mary Papa John Sculpture Park is a remarkable example of what a community can achieve when it works cooperatively and thinks strategically. How great art can help define a great city. For John and Mary Papa John, art has been a constant presence in their lives and at their Des Moines home. We started uh, buying paintings and uh, as Mary says, uh, we ran out of space so we decided to begin buying sculpture. We bought one piece and bought another piece and uh, we liked the sculpture and it became, uh, it became part of our uh, environment. So much of their environment, in fact, that sculptures began to fill the Papa John's backyard. For the longest time, I'd wake up in the morning and look out of our kitchen window and look at all that sculpture. I really felt a little selfish being the only one to enjoy all of this. So the Papa John's decided to share, at least with those driving by the front lawn. On Sundays, we'd see a steady row of cars just looking at the outdoor sculpture in the front. And some of the real daring people would drive through our driveway and turn around in the back so that they could see what we had in the back. These impromptu tours of the attraction on their own lawn continued until John and Mary had another idea. Mary and I were uh, driving down the street on uh, Locust Avenue one day and the city was working on that, those two square blocks for a park and looked over and said, you know what? What do you think? That's where our sculpture belongs. And she looked over and she said, it looks perfect to me. I remember very specifically, John Pop John called me in the March of 2007 and said, I have an idea. And he said, what if we were to make it a sculpture park? The start of a great collaboration between the city, the Art Center, and the Papa John's and numerous funders and supporters uh, to make this happen. I just went till they were uh, all tight. This is very exciting. It's the, it's not the start of because we've been working on this for two years, but it's the start of when things actually become real. So this is very exciting. After two years of waiting, the first piece makes its way to its new home on this chilly morning in May of 2009. The first sculpture is Willie by Tony Smith. Uh, it's a great, exciting moment, and I hope all goes well. To ensure all goes according to plan, the Des Moines Art Center enlisted the expertise of methods and materials of Chicago for the meticulous installation process. Here, the crew with methods and materials methodically hoists the sculpture into place. Each piece presenting the movers with unique challenges, each one has specific instructions for it to be moved safely, and every step of the process is closely documented. We conditioned it at the other end, we're just keeping track of it at this end, and also, in case it ever has to move again, we're making notes on how it's been picked up and moved. And like any project of this scale, building a sculpture park isn't without its challenges, despite all of the planning involved. Every project has its moments. Uh, weather has been a problem, and the mud, this site, is now being graded, but it was a bog. Friday, uh, the mud was intense. One by one, pound by pound, the sculptures are placed. The five-plate Pentagon by Richard Serra the 14,000 pound DeSuvero. Day by day, week by week, progress is made as Des Moines begins to see the park take shape. Excellent, I really like them. The nice thing about this is you got a lot of different type of pieces. Including the Deborah Butterfield Ancient Forest Sculpture, the largest the artist has ever created. And the 2,400 pound Thinker on a Rock by Barry Flanagan. 
and the Burton chair set, each chair weighing nearly 2,000 pounds. All the while, work continues on the less visible parts of the park, strategically placed lighting, grading work for sodding, and installation of the park's irrigation system. After two months of installation, the world-famous Nomad is the final piece to make its much-anticipated appearance. Well, I'm not certain even those of us that have been involved in the planning of this and working with putting the park together really realized how great it was going to be. It's always nerve-wracking. There's always potential for uh, uh, for disaster, but um, it has gone very, very smoothly and everything is working out well. And once again, Methods and Materials has everything in place. The crane operator moves into position, the crew guides each piece carefully to its proper spot. Finally, after a process that stretched two days, the nine-piece sculpture sits perfectly in its new home. We've done this piece quite a number of times now, and it, this is Probably the most straightforward it's ever gone together. The sculptures are just part of the Papa John Sculpture Park. World-renowned architects Agrest and Gandalsones designed the four-acre site as a work of art in and of itself. RDG Planning and Design coordinated the construction, from the flowing walkways to the banking berms and the specially designed lighting. This is in addition to the placement of the art. This is the actual structure of the place. Uh, and the support mechanisms such as irrigation, lighting, electricity, uh, security, because it is those details that really uh, create a spectacular space. Well, I'm in the deal business and usually you have more problems than the the city was wonderful, they were very cooperative. From the beginning, the city, the art center, and civic leaders knew this generous gift would be a once in a lifetime opportunity for Des Moines. Months of planning and construction all come down to a simple realization that the next great attraction in Iowa is about to be born. It's exciting and it's fun to see some of those uncreated boxes and to see some of the sculptures that were in there that we never ever did install around our yard. It doesn't create too many accidents. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it is fun. And for the Papa Johns, this has always been more than another donation. I think it's a real learning process. In fact, when the sculptures were in the front yard, when we'd add a new piece, we'd have neighbors call us and say, tell us the name of that sculptor, because I want to read up on it. For visitors, it's more than just a park. Last night I was in here and there's some uh, skateboarders who came by and said, yo, dude, uh, I wish this was a park. And I was like, this is a park. This is the way it's culture. This is art. So maybe they got on board. For art enthusiasts, it's more than just sculptures. You walk into the park and, and you're automatically uh, confronting with something that's engaging and fun and accessible. It's an example of a public and private partnership to create an experience unparalleled in a city of its size. It's one of those projects that you work long and hard on and it's not been easy because you've got so many different pieces and groups coming together. So to see it actually take place, and it's, it's, it's just unbelievable really. And for the people, it's a shining example of how a city, its private industry, and its citizens can create something more valuable than even the most priceless work of art. Well, we hope that it will really expand the art scene and make art a little more prevalent and prominent. The point is that it will elicit response. And I think that's part of the, part of the challenge and the, uh, the purpose.